Okay, we're back, and this time we're, be look we're looking at an RL circuit. This is a resistor that uh, is in series with a device we call an inductor. It's basically a coil of wire, like a little solenoid that you put inside a circuit. Uh, so it's a magnetic thing, okay, um, whereas something like a capacitor is more of an electric thing. It has electric fields. So the circuit looks something like this, and because we're dealing with loops of wire, or a solenoid, um, we have magnetic flux. And so if you ever change the magnetic flux through that inductor, all that weird Faraday's law stuff happens and Lenz's law. You have in induced voltages, induced currents, um, and these things all vary with time. So it, it's a, a time dependent circuit. So we're going to investigate the properties of it um, when, when everything's in series with the battery. So here's the deal. Uh, the voltage that you have induced in an inductor right, is going to fight the battery. Okay, well, it's going it's to fight the change in flux that happens. And so the expression that we end up with is, is negative L di dt. The minus sign is a reminder of Lenz's law. L is called the inductance. And it's in a, a unit called a Henry. <laughs> Um, if, if you ever deal with you know, numerical values of these things. And then the, the flux really happens because you, of a change in current. Okay, so um, the current is the thing producing the magnetic field. Here's a case where we have uh, basically, with, with Faraday's law, um, we have a constant area and it's the magnetic field that's going to change. Well, the magnetic field changes and is proportional to whatever the current's doing. So that's why we have a DIDT in there. Anyhow, um, let's get to the, the actual circuit. Uh, we're going to use Kirchhoff's rule. It's a series circuit, and so the voltage of your battery is equal to the voltages of all of your components. So the equation will look something like this. We know how to find the voltage across the resistor. That's Ohm's law. And now we have um, the voltage for an inductor, LDIDT. Um, and so right away, we don't have to make any substitutions. We see that we have a differential equation. And our goal is to try to figure out, well, what happens to your current as a function of time? So uh, let's, see what, let's see how to solve this thing. Like we always try to do um, when you have derivatives in equations, try to isolate the derivative. So we're going to get the IDT all by itself. That means we have to move things around just a tad. And I'll divide through by that, that L. <coughs> okay. And now we can try to separate variables. Uh, I'm going to do that by bringing the time up. Okay, so we can get rid of that on the left hand side. And the only way to separate the variables is if I divide through by everything in the parentheses. So once we get into to this form, uh, we can try to integrate. The time, as usual, you start the clock when that switch closes, time equals zero, and you can let it run for as long as you want. Now, corresponding to that, um, for current, now initially, there is no current. Okay, the switch is open. And then uh, if you let it run, what we're really trying to find is whatever that final current is after a long time. So um, hopefully this looks familiar. We've seen it a few times. We see, we see this in mechanics. This is air friction when you have um, a skydiver. This is also an RC circuit when you connect a, a capacitor to a battery. Only there, your variable is charge and, and not current. So anyhow, uh, we get a natural log over here <coughs> of our denominator. We have to evaluate this thing from zero to our final current. Okay, we get time on the other side. Now because of the chain rule, we, we also have to put negative L over R up front. Now I'm, I'm going to move things around. You can fill in the blanks with algebra if, if you choose, but 
Um, on the left hand side, if I skip a couple lines, when we evaluate this thing, and by the way I'm going to move the, these constants over to the right hand side, uh, we would have v over l minus r over l i final minus the natural log when you plug in zero, but we can put that as a fraction in here. So that would just be v over l. Okay, notice that the 1 over l's is going to cancel out inside that natural log. Um, if we e both sides, notice we're going to get an exponential. This is going to look a lot like a charging capacitor solution. Um, the natural log goes away on the left hand side and we can simplify it slightly. We'd have 1 minus um, r over v times i final. And if I just go ahead and, and uh, again skip a line or two of algebra and solve for i final, which is your, your current as a function of time, so we're going to get a 1 minus this exponential. And then we'll have a familiar term up front, v over r. <coughs> and it's Ohm's law. So again, we've, we've, this is the third time we've seen the same kind of solution. And if we graph it, the current is a function of time. If you plug in time equals zero, you get zero current. And then as time gets big, that exponential term approaches zero. And so this thing rises exponentially towards an asymptote, a constant. Okay. And so that's your, that's your maximum current, which according to this is V over R. Okay. So think about what this means. Uh, physically, what the inductor is doing is it's going to try and fight the current. Okay, it fights the battery initially. And that's because it starts off with zero flux when the switch is open. And when you close the switch, the, the battery starts to produce current. And that current tries to go through the inductor. But that would be an increase in flux. So what the inductor does is says, uh-uh, I don't like that change in flux. I'm going to fight you. I'm going to turn on a voltage and I'm going to turn on a current opposite what the battery is trying to do to stop the flux from increasing. Now the trouble is the battery continuously is able to to keep pushing, pushing, pushing and the inductor, the inductor can't. So after a while the inductor loses. But that's why the, the current is dead at first and the battery eventually wins and you hit that, that steady current. So one, one feature of this is um, After a long time, yep, after a long time, uh, inductors act like just a piece of wire. <coughs> okay, they're doing a steady current flow. After a while, their only action is is up front. Um, when you first try to close the switch and it tries to, to stop the current, it tries to stop the flux from increasing. Um, so yeah, it, it's kind of a weird feature, but it's a, a direct effect of Lenz's law and all of these inductive properties. A second piece of this is you have a time constant. That is, you, you can control how quickly or how slowly the, uh, the current turns on with the inductor. And looking at our equation, um, inductance divided by resistance has units of time. Okay, so one Henry divided by one ohm is a second. And brownie points if you want to try to prove that. <laughs> and the third thing is, um, similar to a capacitor, uh, inductors can store energy. Okay, so they, they produce this time dependence, um, and they can store energy. And that turns out to be 1 half Li squared. Okay, we're not going to do a proof here for time's sake, but, um, you know, and you can ask the question, well, how does it do it? Where, where is that energy? 
Well, it's it's in the form of the magnetic field. It's like a solenoid. You know, if, once you get a current flowing through a solenoid, you have a magnetic field inside the tube, inside the coils of wire. And fields are are a way of storing energy. A capacitor stores energy in the form of an electric field. Inductors store energy in the form of a magnetic field. So we have these two components, capacitors and inductors, that mathematically are the same. <laughs> we get these exponential solutions. They store energy. They have time constants. Um, and yeah, it, it's kind of a kind of a cool thing. So um, I hope this helps. And uh, until next time, we'll see you later.